Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Risa, and this is Talent Talk. On today's show, we have acclaimed singer-songwriter Troy Cartwright. Before we get to our interview with him, check out his latest single, Breaking Every Heart in Texas. again joined by my better half Risa Binder on Talent Talk and we are so excited to be joined by the one and only acclaimed singer-songwriter Troy Cartwright. Troy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Well, Mr. Troy Cartwright, we have asked many people about you and if there's one thing that they all said is that not only are you one of the most talented guys out there but one of the kindest and I know that I want to know first and foremost I want, to, I want you to lean into little Troy for a moment. You know, I know you're a humble guy, but I want you to remember, if you can, what was that first moment that maybe you were performing or it was, this, it was a, you were singing and you were like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at this and I really <laughs> like it. Yeah, well, um, I'm trying to think the first time I really, really caught the bug uh, I was, uh, I think I was like 14 or something. And we were playing a uh, battle of the bands in a little town called Coppell, Texas at the first United Methodist church. And, um, the, they basically, we, they, we got to the, the final round. There was like two or three bands at that point, And then they had like a, like a crowd vote. And, uh, after they said, uh, my name, everybody just started chanting my name. And I was like, what is happening right now? This is like the coolest I've ever felt in my life. And uh, I think that probably, you know, gave me all the fuel I needed to keep going. Now, whether that's a blessing or a curse, I guess we'll, we'll, find, <laughs> we'll find out with this career path I've chosen, but uh, it's, it's going good so far. Yeah, I'd well, say so. You're definitely <laughs> rising and rising. And my question to piggyback on that is, I just, I listened to your whole record, um, Halfway to Houston, and you're yeah. such a smart, right, like lyricist, you're such a smart lyricist. And um, what was, like, what is your process like? Are you a, a title guy? Are you a, a story guy? Like how, when you walk into a room, is it is it kind of like the energy that's in the room? Because uh, there's a few songs that really stand out to me on your record. I just, I'm so curious. It's a beautiful, beautiful record. And please tell oh, me more about you. your process. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> well, um, you know, it depends. My writing process kind of depends on, on the day or the, or the song. Um, and I think that's one of the things I love about this record is, um, you know, certain songs, I would say, are more of a, a vibe. Uh, yeah. Like ha Hammer and Halfway to Houston. To me, those are oh. sort of like, dr dr I call them like driving songs. Totally. Uh, you know, you just, when they come on in the car, you just kind of want to roll the windows down or, or whatever. And, um, and then, yeah, for, for the other ones, you know, for, for Shine On Me and God Is Good, um, especially those songs are really um, kind of like therapy. That's definitely stems from me walking into a writer's room and being like, man, I'm just like going through it right now or... <laughs> 
or you know i think we wrote god is good um you know in the fall of, of 2020 and it was there was just so much going on um and i initially didn't really want to write that title because you know religion means a lot of different things to a lot of different people but um the way we kind of came you know we kind of attacked it was was more about like a mantra and it's been really cool because ever since i wrote that song you know it's something i see um everywhere like I, i'll just see somebody tweet god is good or they'll be holding a newborn baby or they'll be staring at a sunset or like um you know i was just in in the middle of nowhere in utah and like looking up at the stars and i could like see the freaking milky way and i was like you know this is this is cool like it's just a kind of a for me it's just a reflection of like how how awesome life can be even when life kind of sucks <laughs> absolutely yeah. and Marisa, before you do your follow-up because i know you have one i just want to follow up a, a mini follow-up <laughs> off of that yeah. i know i will forget and Risa knows god bless my memory <laughs> is not the best but troy what i also love so much about your album and it's all over all of your work you have this sense of spirituality about you where you still make yeah. it digestible and universal for everyone especially where they may be at at their spiritual journey where do you think that great instinct comes from to be true to yourself on a spiritual level but also still make it relatable to others wherever they may be on their spiritual journey um well wow, that's that's really kind of you to say um i i think you know for me i i have uh i grew up going to church a lot i went to you know i grew up baptist in the south in texas and and uh so i i was very like kind of well versed in all of that if you will but but then i i went to school up in boston and and um i find i feel very fortunate to have gotten to kind of interact with people who weren't raised the same way I was um and that uh, that was so good for me as a human being um and and for giving me kind of empathy and realizing that like you know the way that I was raised is not the same way that everyone else was raised and I honestly did not um really write anything about spirituality for for a long time because I I kind of had a like let's just say a toxic relationship with it at times um, but as I've gotten older, you know, I've just sort of realized what works for me um, and, and my path and, and the things that are true for me and that resonate with me. And then at that point, you know, I write what is what is true, I guess. I write what I feel. So I just kind of couldn't help but but come out um, in my songs. But I'm just so um, I'm just so happy that those sorts of songs like have made it onto this record, I, I think you know, I think it's important. So I'm, I'm excited for people to hear it. Well, I just think this record too shows like how well-rounded you are, because again, like there's these songs that just make you want to be in, in a bar hanging out and having a good time. And then like Shine On Me is a great way to end the record, I was thinking, because for many reasons, but like you said, music is therapy. And we say that all the time on this show, like, like our reasons why and like that luck is going to shine on me like that you're out there doing your thing and I love that the first verse is about you as a kid and wanting to do this and then the second verse is about finding that love like your parents had and things like that I I guess my question is have you found several times in your life that music is the thing that you connected to the most at, at, at therapeutically and and um and <laughs> just want to say sign up like we, we we really just need this record we just need it so oh wow well um yeah <laughs> I think music is about the only thing that's like ever ever really made sense to me you know I've always uh I was a you know a pretty emotional kid and uh music really saved me in a lot of ways and just kind of got me through you know the the highs and lows of life you know <laughs> like maybe maybe tell us about a time on stage or something performing where you felt that connection of like music being therapy to you and others maybe in a way yeah absolutely well I, I think you know with shine on me it's it's been really um it's been really cool just getting to play live again you know we've been yeah. able to tour um <laughs> for the last few months or so and and you know that song has been out for a while but I didn't know if if anybody 
knew it or resonated with it. So it's just really cool. Like we were just in, I think, Oklahoma City and, um, you know, you, you play that, that song and I tell a little story um, before I play it about how, you know, when I was a kid, I just put my headphones on and I dream about getting to do this, you know, getting to stand in front of people in a city I am not from and, and play my songs for people. And um, just seeing that resonate with people, hearing them sing along and getting their flashlights out. And then, yes. you know, just uh, like I got a message the other day about somebody who was, uh, you know, a lot like me. He was driving home from a gig at like three in the morning by himself on the road. And that song came on his playlist or whatever. And it just kind of, I, you know, he's like, I just had to reach out because it, it really resonated with me. And I mean, that's that's about as high a praise as I can get. So. Absolutely. I love that. I love yeah. that, Troy. Well, Troy, you know, we both have been thinking about so many questions these past few days to ask you, but there's one in particular that we've been waiting all show to ask you. Troy Cartwright, right. are you ready for game time? I'm ready. Well, Troy, today is your lucky day, and today's game is going to be the questions game. Risa has our questions book in Nashville. Troy Cartwright, we want you to pick two of your favorite numbers between 1 and 150. All right, uh, I'll go 101 and uh, 7. How's Great, that? so number 101 and 7. Risa will be asking the question associated with that number. And Troy, right. just go with your gut with these questions. All right, I'm nervous, but I'm I'm ready. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, one oh one oh one. <laughs> okay, one oh one is. <laughs> what do you remember about your parents' driving habits? That's so random. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Uh, I'm what I remember the most. I think is my mom's my mom's minivan, my mom's Honda Odyssey, and uh, I remember that she always like I'm trying to think like just a funny like road trip memory from my parents or something but nothing's really coming to mind but the Honda Odyssey comes out in a lot of my music I'll tell you and I remember uh sitting in the back and I remember that the doors opened automatically and I thought that that was very very fancy at the time <laughs> Almost, did you ever think it was like a Batmobile Troy I don't know I had an automatic door <laughs> thing growing up and I always felt my parents car was like the Batmobile well it was that and then you know once I was old enough to sit in the front seat it had the um the automatic uh seat belt you know the the one what? it would start here you'd get in and it would go all the way back so you still had to do the lap buckle but this one came across and my parents That's I'll give them a lot of credit for this. They were so good about getting me and my sister. We always wore our seatbelts. I've never thought about not wearing it. So <laughs> I've, I've always tried to be very safe. <laughs> good job, Cartwright. Good work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I okay, love so it. Number seven. Number seven, ready? This is a fun one. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. If you had to spend a day watching the same movie over and over again which movie would you choose <laughs> mm. and why and oh. why um i think i would have to go with um, the movie that i've probably watched the most times is this wes anderson film it's called the life aquatic yes um, i bet i've watched it like 50 times i don't know at this point it's like it's like if I'm stressed out, I put that on because I know what's going to happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's very therapeutic to me. But um, I have always just admired uh, Wes Anderson, the way he creates his own universe and wow. the richness of his characters and his attention to detail. I do not have attention to detail, um, so I'm very jealous of that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think if that, if I had to watch that one only for the rest of my life, I think I would be fine with that. Good answer. Well, Troy Cartwright, we've had so much fun with you. We could ask yeah. you questions for days, but listen, <laughs> all good things must come to an end. But before we let you go, we would love it. If you could play us out with just a snippet of any song that you would like, um, yeah, you know, we have coming out soon or a song of your choice. What are you thinking, Mr. Troy? Well, I just so happen to have his guitar sitting right here. Stop it. I know. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds? Um, so I would love to sing you guys a song off my uh, 
my new EP, Halfway to Houston. This is a, uh, a song we talked a little bit about. Um, and I'll just sing you a little chorus. This is a, a song called God is Good. And uh, it goes like this. Y'all ready? Yeah. So ready. There ain't no way I'm going back tomorrow. And it won't always go the way I wish it would. And I know time's just something that we borrow. Lord knows I forget more than I should. But God is good. Wow, Troy Cartwright, thank you so much. Not only is God good, but you are great. Troy Cartwright, oh, thank, thank you, you so much. much for joining us today on Talent Talk, thank my you. friend. Thank you guys for having me. It was so much fun. I hope we can uh, do it again sometime. Can't wait. We do too. <laughs> awesome. All right.